This is a drawing done from life at School of Realist Art. In this drawing, you're going to see a lot of foreshortening, and I'm going to talk to you about how I tackled the foreshortening here. This was a 40 minute pose, and you can see the finished drawing off to the right hand side. Notice all the foreshortening that's there, and that I'm starting off just by drawing some outlines. I'm kind of piecing things together. I want to make sure that I get the relationship of the shoulders and the hips, since they're going to be much closer together than expected. You can see right there in the beginning, I almost put a little bit too much distance between the hip on our right and the arm on our right, so I had to erase that and move it back. While you can't see it in the lines, I'm doing a lot of comparing here, and I'm looking where the back comes down the left-hand side and then points at the separation in the glutes. And I'm looking at the distances between the shoulder and the waist, the waist and where she is seated, and other small measurements like this to try and make sure that I get everything appropriately crunched. In foreshortening poses, some shapes are going to be much closer than you expect them to be, and closer shapes are going to appear larger in comparison to shapes that are further away. Looking at these small distances and closely comparing them to the model really helps. It also really helps to look through the shapes. Here's what I mean. You should be able to find an arch going all the way from one hip toward the other hip. And you can even follow that circle and imagine where it goes through the other side of the figure. The same thing with the shoulders. You can imagine circles overlapping each other. A circle for the shoulders, a circle for the waist or the stomach area, and a circle for the hips. You can even find circles on the legs and the knees. This all really helps the foreshortening. Once I felt like I have a decent plan for my drawing, I chose to begin by shading in white charcoal before really doing much with the black charcoal. This is because I really like the feeling of light coming from the other side of the model. It's not a typical lighting situation. I built up the strongest lights first and once I felt like I had my lightest lights established, then moved on to shading in the shadow. Sometimes I choose to shade the entire shadow really solidly and then add darker areas. But this time I'm doing a little something different and there's a specific reason for that. In this instance, I'm not covering the entire shadow with charcoal but instead I'm just shading in the darker areas so that I can use the paper as my reflected light. I'm choosing this because of that situation I mentioned earlier where the light is coming from the other side of the model. This means that we have more shadow than we do light. And since we have more shadow, we need a larger value range for our shadows. So the shadows in this drawing are going to end up going from all the way at the dark end of the spectrum to kind of a medium to medium light value in those reflected lights. And then the light area is really just these few values up at the top light end of the value scale. When the situation is different, and there are a lot of light values, the opposite is gonna be true. You're going to have a wider range of values in the lights and the shadows are overall going to be darker. That's an instance where instead, I would go ahead and fill in the shadow to begin with. If you're looking to brush up on your figure drawing skills, why not take the five day figure drawing challenge? you'll get a 30 minute lesson every day for five days. 
Plus, you can join the forum and communicate with other students interested in figure drawing and get feedback from me. Check it out at figuredrawingacademy.com.